CG animated movie about toys written by next week. Ah! Oh man, how am I gonna make a movie about talking toys any good? Muse. I've got it! Cinematic Lego commercial written by tomorrow morning! How am I gonna make a giant ad for building blocks good? Angry Birds. I'm a nostalgia critic guy, remember it, so you don't have to. Who says there can't be good video game movies? Goddamn Angry Birds does! Based on the hit game from 2009, Angry Birds was a phenomenon that practically took over the world. Everybody loved its simple premise, easy gameplay, and quirky style. So of course Sony leaped at the opportunity to make a film at the height of its popularity nine years later. Yeah, nine years! What took them so long? Were they actually waiting for this to get nostalgic to cash in on it? Or hey, maybe they just really wanted to get it right before unleashing their cinematic opus. Well, judging by what we got, Angry Birds probably spend as much time on its story as... Well, Angry Birds. It's remarkably lazy in so many ways, but apparently was still a big hit. Even warranting a friggin' sequel. Why? Because to quote Frederick Nietzsche, God is dead and you killed him with Angry Birds. We never knew what he meant by that last part, but now we do. Despite it making a ton of cash, there are so many critics and audience members that just hated this movie. Ever since it was announced, I have people asking me to review it, and ever since it came out, I had even more people asking me to review it. Sadly, it's both popular enough and bad enough to warrant attention. Let's take a look at what these bird brains came up with. This is Angry Birds the movie. So we start off this barrel of fresh ideas with the incredibly original opening of Somebody Running Late. Well, if this fresh new idea worked in Back to the Future, Green Lantern, Lilo and Stitch, Girl Who Led Through Time, Big Fat Liar, Buffy the Vampire Slayer, Alice in Wonderland, Tommy Boy, Cat Returns, Spider-Man 2, Brazil, Four Weddings and a Funeral, Gremlins, Mulan, and an anime trope so well known there's countless images of people running late with toast in their mouths. WHY NOT ONE MORE?! This is Red, played by Jason Sudeikis, who is on his way to be a clown at a birthday party. But like I said, he arrives late. Or... Does he? I'm not late. Look at the time. See, the order said before noon. <laughs> okay, now you're late. You That's missed the party. Up. So, wait, they said arrive before noon, it's noon, and the party's over? Let me look at the script. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. These are the studio notes. You know, I tried to keep my body between the ground and the box, but you no, know, I think I got a little bruised. See anything back there? <sighs> hmm, don't know which one of these to go with. Why not both? A family picture! Red finally loses his temper and smashes the cake into the parent's face. Gluten-free cake? What the heck is gluten? I mean, does gluten even exist? Yeah! What? But he slips on a squirrel, destroying the egg behind him. Congratulations! Huh? It's a boy! Um, did we just witness a murder? What was his clown name, Pigeon Wise? As the credits roll, we see Red has some anger issues, as it confusingly cuts back and forth between him being a child and him being an adult. With literally no segue or reason, I didn't even notice it the first time. I know that doesn't sound like much, but it's not like it's showing him growing up, establishing who he is, it just kind of randomly cuts to him as a kid. We just cut to him as an adult, then a kid, then an adult, then him being born. What the hell is the flow of consciousness here? 
In fact, the whole intro seems out of sequence. It says the title, then it says the studios present, then it cuts to random points in his life in no particular order, like I said, ending with him being born, and then it cuts back to him with the family he visited. Absolutely none of it ties together. It's literally random scenes in random order. It makes no sense. And that was my review of Angry Birds. Oh, I'm sorry, did my sloppy half-ass editing confuse you? Well, if someone can make $352 million off of it, I might as well exploit it while skipping the tough parts too! The parents take Red to trial because he was the first thing their child saw being hatched. Oh, by the way, you want to hear the weak-ass reason why they use slingshots in this movie instead of just flying? Why don't birds fly? I'm gonna tell you why. Where else would we ever want to go? <laughs> <laughs> wow. Not a good joke. One of the many lines I don't think was in the script and was just the actors talking without knowing the microphone was on. This terrifying star of your nightmares tonight is a judge that sentences Red to anger management. But Red reveals the judge is just two birds to make him seem taller. What does this have to do with anything going on, even with the judge ignoring that reveal? Mr. Red, given the severity of the crimes... Look, the mind talked! Oh my god... We set him up for about two seconds, so this punchline really pays off. Hey, compared to the time they put in for the other jokes, two seconds is long! Anger management class. Oh, pluck my life. <laughs> he means the F word, kids. Hmm. Nope. Oh, I just left that pause because I know you're laughing so hard at the idea of a bird not giving another bird a hug. What? You're not laughing at that? Well, you should. It's repeated all throughout the movie. I don't even think I really understood it the first time, but the movie is telling me it's funny over and over, so I should leave the appropriate amount of space for laughter. Is it too late to get that creepy girl from Hereditary in this? <laughs> eh, it's been a while since something unfunny happened. Actually, no, it hasn't, but here's another one anyway. <laughs> Oh, he's attacking a sign he doesn't like. I guess this could be humorous if anybody acted like they cared about anything. That's probably the biggest problem I get throughout this entire film. Look at this slapstick. There's energy, but no creativity to it. Look at these expressions. They're big, but nothing clever is being done with them. Heron, peacock, warrior, mountain, tree, rabbit, fish, locust, king pigeon. Even the performances, particularly from our lead, all sound like they just took the first take and never asked for another. It sounds unbelievably like autopilot. Okay, I guess that's art, that's garbage, and that's... Exotic. Everybody feels like they're just doing the bare minimum. Sometimes not even that. Maya Rudolph plays the same smiling weirdo she always does. Josh Gad plays the same hyper dummy he always does. And I don't really remember what character Danny McBride usually has, which is fitting because I don't really remember what character he's supposed to have here either. I guess he just blows. What are you doing down there? Exactly what you think I'm doing down here. Believe it or not, there is an actual funny moment when they reveal why everybody is there at anger management. And one of them is so bad, they can't even say it out loud. Terrence, uh, seems to have had an <clears throat> incident. We never find out what he did. It's left entirely to the imagination. And what makes this even funnier? Sean Penn plays this part. And what makes this even funnier is he never says a word. He just groans. How the hell did we get a joke that works on three different levels in a movie where the jokes don't even work on one level? Was there just a day where really good writers were brought in for like two seconds? Okay, you're the finest writers in Hollywood. We need some really good jokes for our movie. Oh, we already wrote one while you were talking. Well, I guess that's why you're the best in town. Uh, what is this movie called, by the way? Angry Bird, you're already gone, aren't you? Yeah, well, at least we got one joke out of it. Mm, back to our usual writer. It's a pleasure watching you work. I'm gonna need some Mexican food to do the sequel. your story bomb well sometimes when i get upset i literally blow up okay i explode like a bomb yeah remember that level on angry birds where they just sat around and did therapy they were trying new ideas like what mario did in fact that might actually be a mario game do it no can do i just went boom boom before class poop the other birds want to hang out with red but he gives them the cold shoulder i'm busy too 
you're not good at this, buddy. It's it's charming up to a point, and now it's just sad. Again, I'm pretty sure he was just talking about the script. Let's do that incredible hug joke again! Hmm. Nah, -uh. no means no. Hmm. You know there's running jokes, and then there's, yeah, I'm definitely gonna be there for the marathon. Yeah, I'm definitely gonna train so hard. Yeah, I'm definitely gonna show my support. Yeah, I'm definitely gonna be there. Eh, I'll just donate to the cause. Jokes. Give him credit, at least this random cut to his childhood includes bad exposition. When's Mighty Eagle gonna come back? Didn't your parents ever tell you Mighty Eagle isn't real? He doesn't have parents. They were killed in the great Disney genocide of dramatic convenience. But trouble is on the literal horizon as a ship full of pigs arrives destroying Red's house. Well, more damages the side of it because destroying the whole thing would be funnier. And Lord knows we can't have that in the movie! Greetings! We saw your island across the sea and we thought, wonder what they're up to. These things look like the minions banged whatever animal died to give us green eggs and ham. Except we had the luxury of that meat being dead. There's no other place besides here. We call it Piggy Island. Oh my god. You know, this movie would be half a length if they didn't keep repeating the same goddamn jokes. What, did you run out of the bad hugging joke? Oh, nope, you still slipped in that gem again. Oh, that relatable, nobody wants to hug me humor. In the industry, we call that the Iggy Pop. The birds welcome the pigs, but Red doesn't trust them because they destroyed his house. At least, that's how it's supposed to come across, but honestly, it sounds more like he has some deep-seated racism with other cultures. They don't have feathers? Our king sends his warmest regards. King? How did the friendship between the pigs and the birds start? Who cares? Hey, look, they destroyed more of the stuff we worked hard to build. Hey, if you got the night off, why don't you fix my house? Well, their religion better not be different from ours. Everyone knows there's just one gotcha man. Your friends, the pigs, proudly give you the slingshot! We present to you a flimsy pretext to make a game not meant to be a movie seem like it was meant to be a movie. Don't worry, by the end you'll all see this as a weapon of mass destruction. So Red sneaks into the pig's boat and finds... The little green men from Toy Story? By the way, why do we get the feeling this book on the pig's boat is just a variation of this? I snuck onto their boat! He confronts the pigs about there being even more of them, as well as the strange devices he doesn't recognize. Any questions? <laughs> Nobody needs that in their lives. Nobody needs that in their lives. My cousins are simple folk. Watch. A, B, C. Nothing. See? Nothing. Oh, that was amazing. That was actually kind of amazing. You could literally put anything there and it would have gotten a laugh. But you decided to go with nothing, so you get nothing. Literally any joke could have worked there. Watch. A, B, C. Four. A, B, C. Cabbage. A, B, C. John C. Okay, maybe not any joke. The leader says his cousins weren't smart, so he wanted to be sure it was a safe place before he revealed them. The birds believe him, and everybody celebrates with not the worst pig jokes ever written, but... What the hell am I comparing it to? Yeah, these are the worst pig jokes ever written! There was Pigland. Piggy back rides. Instaham! Somebody needs to be punished, and with sharp things. Speaking of pig puns, I think I can come up with a few more after this disturbingly confusing subtext. That's how our children are born. You guys don't lay eggs? I wish we did. Enchanté. Why do birds... Yeah, how about pigophile? Piggerass? Petterham? Bacon generate? Hog deviant? Stein offender? I could think of more, but I don't want to think of this in general. The pigs are actually intending to eat them. Shame on you. But nobody seems to catch on to that except for Red, who everybody continues to mock. Continue the tour. So get ready to hang That went well. If you're me. <laughs> Dummy. Whoa, I, I mean, wow. I, I, I couldn't write a line like that. I mean, that's ingenious. How long did it take him to put that together? Good lord, that, that's like the greatest insult sense. What other box, you fart? Ghost of Don Rickles, I think we found your replacement. gets an idea to find Mighty Eagle so he can stop the pig's evil plan. Right before a confusing out of nowhere fantasy the other birds have about him. Mighty Eagle! Peekaboo! 
Becky, um, Josh Gad, I never thought I'd say this, but you're really getting typecast as kids' films characters who need to come out of the closet. While climbing mountains, imagining what the eagle's battle cry is like, they thankfully cast aside the obnoxious, annoying writing and just dive directly into obnoxious, annoying sounds. What would a mighty eagle battle cry sound like? Why torture your intellect when mere ear bleeding is more than enough? You paid to see this, folks. You could have used that money to buy a collection of barn animals bonking themselves to death, but instead you went for this. To their credit, both of these sound very similar, but there's some joy to this. They get to where the eagle lives and they decide to swim in his pool. And again, we partake in a fascinatingly botched joke. Two of them take a long time swimming in the pool in slow-mo, only to have the eagle come out and take his daily piss in it. <sighs> So bad enough they hold uncomfortably long on this piss taking. Only geniuses steal from Norm of the North. But if this joke was gonna work, and that's a big goddamn if, they should have shown them in the pool while he was pissing and Red tries to warn them about what's going on. Then the slow-mo would make sense. We would want it to go slower to soak up, so to speak, the humor of the situation. Here, it's just slow-mo for no reason, dragging out what isn't set up properly yet. Again, every joke seems weirdly backwards. I keep expecting to see one of them in a flower shop saying, that's me. But that couldn't happen because that film actually made me laugh. The eagle, voiced by Peter Dinklage, spots the birds and chats with them. You have passed the first test. You have drank my piss. It's a weird test. So they go inside his cave and find a warped mirror. Hey, they look like the game. That'd be funny if they didn't already do that. Throw them the pile of other shitty repeated jokes. But if repetition to the point of self-decapitation is your game, don't worry, they give themselves a dance party. The fourth one in this movie so far. Yeah, you know how most animated films nowadays end with a dance party to sell a soundtrack? They made a whole goddamn movie about it. Okay, okay, maybe I'm jumping the gun just because you have four dance party sequences in your movie doesn't necessarily mean it's lame or manipulative. Five, on the other hand. Oh yeah, right after they find out the eagle is too lazy to help him, they go back to interrupt another dance party going on. The fifth freaking one. I don't think Dirty Dancing had this much dancing in it. And I ironically feel as dirty watching it. So the pigs take all the eggs while distracting them with their fifth dance party and sail back to their island. So Red, through shitty writing and unfunny jokes, <laughs> really why break the norm here, tries to inspire everybody to go after him. They stole our kids. I mean, who does that? Have you ever stolen anyone's children? Have you? I mean, you look like you would. You know, this running gag's already not funny. Don't make me think about seeing him on to catch a predator. So they build a ship to chase after the pigs who are back on their island celebrating. Shouts up! <laughs> Man, it's a snout staircase! Who thinks of that? Nobody. Because it's not clever or funny or worth mentioning. Did anybody turn in a second draft? The birds get to the island and try to figure out a way to attack. And you can all guess where this is going. Lord Jesus, that'd be awesome. No, they start launching themselves like in the game. <laughs> Funny, they took a long time establishing the bomb bird's ability to blow up and even create a character arc for him. But the first time we find out about this bird's weird power is... Well, how about that? My teacher can shoot fireballs out of her butt. How'd that song go from the Rankin Bass version of Return of the King? It's so easy not to try. How did that not make it onto the soundtrack? Well, I guess it's a little less obvious than Hog Topic. Let's just agree, though, everybody's in pain somehow. Gee, I wonder if the mime's gonna say, oh my god. Oh my god! It's like they say, if at first you don't succeed, this isn't funny! Red, Chuck, and Bomb make it into the castle where they come across... Red Rum. Uh, never mind. 
People, that happened. We let it happen. We must never let it happen again. Join me in thinking up ways of preventing that from happening in the future. Chuck rips off the Quicksilver scene from X-Men that X-Men would later rip off themselves themselves as they get closer to the eggs. Everyone fights in a climax that is so desperate and so banking on your kid's low attention span that it's actually hard to find a shot that is over two seconds long. I shit you not, watch these scenes uncut and see if any of them hold on a shot for more than two seconds. My eggs! Mm. Don't forget Chuck and Bob! Mm. Who? Mm. Those guys! Mm. Right, right! Uh. Mm. Uh oh mm. <laughs> No. Mm. Uh. explosive thoughts. Mm. The whole climax is like this, folks! Freaking scary! Christ, fast editing is fine, but you need a variety to care. Look at Two Towers. It had fast editing, but it also knew to give sweeping shots and moments focusing on characters taking in what's going on. Because they like you, audience, and they want to give you something good. This clearly just wants to wave its keys at the low attention span it thinks you have and wants to encourage you to keep. I think this film's actually worse than binge drinking, because you lose more brain cells and vomit at a greater level! So the eagle comes in to save the eggs, leaving it to Red and King Pig to fight. This is dynamite. It's so easy not to try. But he outsmarts the pig, blowing up the kingdom as everyone gets their seemingly smaller pile of eggs back. Jesus, how many did they lose? That pile was a lot bigger before! Angry Birds got dark. One family seems to be missing theirs though, but Red comes in with the final one. I think these belong to you. Oh! <laughs> oh, we can only afford to raise two. We'll have to eat one of them. Oh, look, he's blushing. <laughs> I'm not blushing, I'm just red. <laughs> that was the big cheering and laughing line. I feel like you could have put pretty much anything there. We're corporate shills in Hollywood's playground. <laughs> I bet the emoji movie is looking pretty good right now. <laughs> Too much, man! <laughs> Let's see if this ever got funny. <laughs> well, it's not quite the genius of King Koopa ordering a pizza, but it still disappoints. Red makes it look like he still doesn't want to hang out with Chuck and Bomb, but tells them he was just kidding. Guys, I'm just messing with you! Get in here! I can't end this movie without sharing the blame with others! Jeez, with all the dance party sequences, I'm surprised it didn't end on what- Ah, here we go! I just walked in to find you here right with that you. sad look upon your face Oh, trust me, I will survive is the perfect musical choice for this film! This was unbearable! It... it doesn't even feel done! A lot of bad comedies just tell jokes that don't work. This just tells sentences that don't work. It's hard to remember in recent memory of film this lazily written, lazily acted, and lazily directed. Nothing feels unique, nothing feels passionate, nothing feels earned. It comes across as rushed, awkward, and just not caring. I mean, I know every movie takes a lot of time and effort to make, which is why it's a shame when a film is so bad none of that comes across. I'm sure a lot of work and time did go into making this, but it never comes across in the viewing experience. It just feels like one long, incredibly unentertaining commercial. If you want to play the games, that makes sense. Hell, most of you are probably playing the game while watching this damn movie. But if you want to check out this obnoxious piece of bird shit on its own, I say fly away as fast as possible. I'm the Nostalgia Critic, and you know, where's a muse when you need one? Uh, uh, I am back from the dead to inspire once more. Oh good, I was just talking about the Angry Birds movie. I should have remembered it so she didn't have to. Poop! 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 Okay, wow. I sound goddamn insane. <laughs> Thank you.
Well, how about that? My teacher can shoot fireballs out of her butt. Hey, Doug Walker here doing the charity shout out. No, I'm not repeating the same charity, uh, but this charity does also have a connection to Red Nose Day. It is Comic Relief. Both Comic Relief USA and their sister organization, Comic Relief UK, share a vision of a world free from poverty, driving positive change through the power of entertainment. They make grants to charity partners that support people living in poverty in America and in some of the poorest communities in the world. Since they first set up shop in 1985, they've been doing three main things. Raising millions through two big fundraising campaigns, Red Nose Day and Sports Relief. Spending that money in the best way possible to tackle the root causes of poverty and social injustice. And using the power of that brand to raise awareness of the issues that need the most attention. If you look at their site and their YouTube channel, you can see all the good people as well as celebrities who have come together to raise awareness of the good you can do and usually in the most memorable of ways. Check them out and see how you can donate to a cause that can bring a smile to anyone's face.